Hello there, Niyama Shang here, and thank you so much for letting me be a part of your journey today here on the Outliers Edge podcast, where we champion the leaders who are shaping the next era of humanity. We have one such leader in front of us. Uh, Carrie Kenzie, I am absolutely thrilled to be spending time with you uh, to find out more about your journey and to like see how you bring your outlier out in the world and leverage it to the highest extent possible. Uh, it's good to it's good to have you here. Yeah, thanks so much. Yep, you know, uh, I'd like to start off here with, um, I, I, want, I want people to get a chance to get to know you, um, mm -hmm. at, both personally and professionally. Uh, I'm going to have you speak to it in just a bit, but I want to, like, we got a chance to connect uh, a little bit beforehand. Uh, and if you're cool with it, I'd like to just share a little bit about, like, like who you've been to me so far. Is that cool? I love that? it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I also find like it helps ground me into this moment. I'm like, there's a real person here. <laughs> like, looks like, like, who is this? So Carrie, like the, the thing that, the thing that like really strikes me is like, um, I feel, I feel like just like energetic, like resonance with you. Like, um, mm -hmm. how do I, when I think energetic resonance, what, what comes up, I'm, I'm moving my hands in front of like my chest here. Right. Um, as in like, uh, in, an outward radiance. I think that's probably the best thing. energetic radiance, I think is what, what comes through um, with a, um, that's just really like centered and grounded at the same time. All right. Um, I get excited when I, I, I think about talking to you because I'm like, oh, our conversations can go in many different directions, but like uh, the way in which you choose to navigate it is something that takes things where I, I honestly, like I, I might think of it for myself as, um, how do I say it? I just find a way to tether really like 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 ideas and ground it in a way that feels very like both approachable and also just like true. And that that's some that also feels that feels really good. So uh as we step into this conversation, I want to remind myself that and also just share that, like share like how you've already been showing up for me here. And I'm looking forward to our conversation. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, most certainly. So like, why don't we get give everyone a chance to get to know you a bit here, uh, mm -hmm. share a bit with us uh, about what you'd like us to know about you both personally and professionally. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, so I am, I would say first and foremost, I am a mother. I've got three amazing uh, children. My path has been uh, quite windy and uh, I would say chaotic, a little bumpy uh, from early childhood up until, you know, recent years. Um, I currently am a speaker. Uh, I am a quantum coach. I work with people uh, to really help them to be able to navigate the stories of their life, to be able to heal through the trauma and the experiences that we've had, shedding and uh, stripping away the layers of belief systems, of identities, the things that we have been attached to in this lifetime that have really kept us from being authentically ourselves as we express ourselves into the world. Um, and so that's the work I do. It stems from my own experience. I mean, I, you know, lived kind of the American dream life up until I was 38 years old, uh, you know, house with the picket fence and the kids and the marriage and the church and uh, you know, owning a business. I mean, I checked all the boxes and then I crossed a finish line that would change my life. I happened to be in Boston and I had run the Boston marathon in 2013 when the terrorist attack happened. And that, uh, really is where my life path. And I say my divine purpose collided. Um, I came home a spectator of that event over a participant. And I say that because, you know, I was in the medical tent at the finish line when the attack occurred. Um, I left, uh, witnessed, experienced many things as you can only imagine, but I eventually found my family and was not physically injured. Others had it worse. Um, and so I left Boston, came home, went to work the next day, watched the news with the rest of my staff. When they caught the second brother, we turned off the TV and I went back to my life. Um, that did not prove to be the most beneficial thing for me, um, as it doesn't for many, though we feel like it's the best thing we could potentially do. Uh, it actually led to uh, crippling, chronic, debilitating illnesses, and that would go on for a number of years until I found remedy. Once I did, once I understood the things that I now know, um, I knew that there was no turning back. Um, I knew that I had to help humanity. I had to help people who found themselves in similar yet completely different situations awaken to the essence of who they are, to understand how powerful they are, and really to bring that forward into the world. 
So I guess in a nutshell, <laughs> a big nutshell, um, that's me. I'm a disruptor. I'm here to challenge. Uh, and this is the not only the mission of myself, it's the mission in the business uh, shift and then also in my nonprofit, Ripples of Change. Thank you for bringing us into into your world here. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I want to spend some time today, like exploring both the journey of what mm -hmm. has been as uh, as well as what's happening right now. Yeah. Right. Um, you do things differently, you know, mm -hmm. and I and uh, like I get to spend my time with a number of people who uh, are are making like are working with people to shift the consciousness of the world to to bring people in uh more into themselves and that there's, there's something that you differently you do differently you had to like go out there and say like either for yourself or what your clients might say about like what's a dip what's different once they enter i'll call it your world uh whether it's okay. your business into a conversation so on and so forth what would you say is one of the things that like strikes you as like hey this is what we try and do differently um, well, I would say the first thing that we do is we really invite people back into their own wisdom. Mm -hmm. We uh, embrace the understanding that each individual knows the path and each individual knows the journey forward. And they simply need to be re-invited and ignited back into who they are in the essence of their own power. Um, and so for me, what that looks like is really helping people to be able to understand kind of that opening of the mind and the experiences that they're having and allowing them, giving them permission to be really super curious without any kind of bias around what is behind that door and what is the mind, what is the energy, what is their experience trying to show them? Because if we have the opportunity and when we take the opportunity to embrace bravery, and I mean embrace bravery from a, a place of really self-love knowing and and the fact that I don't want to be here anymore. I want to be somewhere else, but I can't have somebody else take me there. Nobody else is going to be able to take you to that place. I, as a coach, cannot take you to that place. And I think that is very much a um, an issue that we have in that industry, quite honestly, is that we're consistently looking for strategies and directives, and we're not being invited back into our own inner wisdom. And when we can shift those per perspectives and we can get curious about the things that have brought us into this particular moment, we can unravel and untangle the things that are keeping us locked in place uh, in, unable to see with clarity the path forward, shifting that, opening that up, we will have the clarity and all of a sudden we'll go, I know exactly what I need to do. I know exactly the step I need to take moving forward. And, and that's the position that we effort to place everybody in either through the coaching or the membership programs. It is all about creating authenticity and reconnection with that inner landscape of you. So I, now I have to ask this question as it's come along because uh, you were telling us about a bit about your journey, um, mm -hmm. and then you said uh, you said like you went back back to work like just just the mm -hmm. next day, you know, and uh, it it gets me thinking about the person who's like that, that's living their life right now that may not recognize that like the the path to inner wisdom is like is is what's they, mm -hmm. they actually would serve them. Can you let me know like how did you? put yourself on this path? How did, like, where were you at when you started to discover, like, wait a minute, I need to change something. I need to go down uh, a path to, to discover something else differently inside of me uh, and go from there. I'd be really curious about that. Yeah, it's such a great question. And uh, because I, like you, very much want people to understand kind of the, the totality of a journey, mm -hmm. I will say this, it did not happen overnight. It did not happen, happen in a particular moment. It was actually an unfolding of things that I just had the opportunity to be aware of. Um, so when I, I had no idea there was any connection, quite honestly, between my illnesses and my experience, even though I went from running marathons to not being able to walk up a flight of stairs unassisted within a matter of months. To me, there was no connection connection between the two. So I went down a, a route for physical healing. I went to every doctor. I went to every specialist. Nobody could figure out what was going on other than I would get, you're depressed. About a year, um, a year into this, I found a specialist I hadn't been to. He said this thing to me. He said, well, he checked my stats. He was looking at all the things and he says, are you a runner? I was like, well, yeah, why? He said, oh, cause your heart rate's really low. It's like, okay, people say that to me all the time, like not a big deal. But he said this, he goes, look, I don't have anything that's going to be able to help you. There's nothing in my toolkit that's going to make you better. But here's what I can tell you. 
is that you're not depressed because I've never known a runner to be depressed. And what I realized in that moment, but would completely unfold for me over the course of a couple of years was that he saw me. Like all of a sudden I wasn't a diagnosis and it wasn't the piece of paper that was sitting in front of him. He was like, look, I know this about you. And so what I can tell you is because I know this, that's not what's happening within you. And what that showed me was that I had to, like, I had to start looking at things that way for myself as well. Like nobody else was going to have an answer. I had to figure this out. I'd been to all the doctors. And so that's when I just started getting curious about things, meaning I would listen to podcasts. And if I would hear something three times, it's always my magic number. If I hear it three times, then I got to follow it. Okay. So somebody I'd pop random, pop on these podcasts and Lyme disease would come up. And I heard the third time I heard it. Okay. I need to go get tested for that. And I'd find that out. That's what it was. And I just kept following that kind of path. And then the more I followed that path, the more I trusted myself to get more curious about things, to figure out more directions that I needed to go. And so I went from Western medical route to a holistic medical route to ending up at a conference because I just had this gut feeling email came across. We have this coaching program. It's a two day intensive on the front end of this. Uh, you know, you're invited to come. I said, yes, without telling anybody, asking anybody, it was just like that impulse, but because I trusted myself because I followed this path and it led me here, I was like, I have to be there. And that's what continued to open things up for me. So when I look back now and I go, okay, if there's one message that I could tell anybody, it'd be this, like you have to choose you. And that's what I had to consistently do. I had to consistently choose me. And every time I did, it just proved to me that I could do it. And then I could follow my own curiosity and I could trust myself. And that's how I ended up finding the healing that I did. You know, as you as you're saying this here, it's taken. I'm listening to. I'm listening to a couple of different things. One of it is like is that when you said it didn't happen overnight, like you weren't joking. No. Uh, like, <laughs> like, like, like no. you was like, I did this, I did that, I did this. I saw all the doctors. I went the whole down this, this whole route over here. You know, so that's that's one. And then the other thing here, and like, is like, as I'm hearing, I'm I'm imagining what an experience would be like with you because. Not only did you choose your path throughout this path throughout this time, but it, it didn't. How do I say it? It doesn't necessarily feel like a linear path, right? Uh, not just like oh, I was going in the physical and then I went down a different different route there, but like you, it seems that from what I'm hearing, like like you kept pulling the thread, and wherever wherever the thread would take you, you would go. And as I, as I was thinking as you were talking, I was like, wow. Uh, the doctor said to you, this is not, I don't like, I don't have this tool in my toolkit to support you on it. Mm -hmm. And as I, I'm hearing, I'm like, oh, you have a lot of tools in your toolkit right now. <laughs> you know, you have a lot of, you have a lot of tools yeah. in your toolkit. Uh, so tell me here, like, as you, like, with all these tools here, how do you, how did you like decide to like now say, I'm going to go bring this out in the world as my own thing or to, to lead with, to lead it yourself rather than, um, you know, continue to be a practitioner and continue to do what you were doing, um, in the world beforehand. Okay. So I'm a challenger and I've always been a challenger. Like I have a little rebellion spirit, so I don't like doing things the way that other people do them. I always like doing things just a little bit differently. Um, I like to have a path, but I only want to have the path enough to know that there's like a lane, but I want to get super curious throughout the entire thing of it. So that's a, that's a big piece of it. Um, I ended up selling my business in, um, the, beginning of 2019. The interesting thing about that story is was never, um, I was never interested or even had the thought process of selling my business. Um, it was honestly my family's retirement. And that's the thing that we were, you know, we were going to do. I received a text message one day and much like that, you know, conference that came across in my email, this text message said, Hey, um, if you ever think about selling your business, let me know. Uh, I would, you know, I would pay you multiple of what you would get any other way. And it happened to come from a peer, good friend of mine. And I immediately shot a text back. I think you caught me on a good day. And then I went, what the heck did I just do? <laughs> mm. But then I sat and I got curious about it, right? Because I think that we have those moments of just that, that gut instinct. And I've learned, you just have to go with that gut instinct. I can question it later, right? But I've got to take a jump first. 
And that's what I did. And part of me knew that this was my path. Part of me knew that I needed to help awaken humanity to the power that they had within. And it came to me through my own kids, which is typically what happens, I think, for a lot of people is we will see things that are happening in our own families or in our own children. We think, you know what? I would love to, I would love to be able to fix that. I would love to be able to help somebody with that. Well, my son and I had an experience um, in 2018 that just altered everything that I knew and everything that I understood. And it was this, that in the power of my own healing, it affected and had the power to heal him as quickly as anything potentially could. We talk about, you know, these beliefs and these things that carry through generations and, you know, the, um, uh, sins of the father, so to speak, kind of those old understandings, right? Like, how do we break the chain? How do we heal the generation? How do we stop this cycle from happening? And when I sat down on a particular evening based on an experience we had, and I shifted everything for me, and 20 minutes later, he came into me and I could tell instantaneously it had shifted it in him. I thought, this is it. This is how we heal, not just ourselves, but we heal our communities. We heal generations is by simply taking our own power back. And so it was the combination of the two things that really opened up the world to me that said, you know what, there's something bigger here. There's something greater. Um, and honestly, the universe, God, like literally opened up that, um, opportunity, opportunity for me in 2019. Um, and it ended up being one of the greatest blessings, uh, you know, pre COVID. So, Thank you for this. Like, because I, I, even as you're talking, uh, what's happening is that you're also like re you're reminding me, and and as I'm listening to you, I'm checking in with some things. You know, yeah. I mean, we might bring this up uh, a little bit later on, but I'm checking in around like um, one of the things that gets me is that is the conviction, right? Mm. Um, the the conviction and knowing about like what like what is driving you, and then being able to see like how this continues to to play itself out. Mm -hmm. You talked here about like inner wisdom, and was, I'm thinking about just around me and I'm thinking about like people had known you a certain way up until mm -hmm. up until like you said like the, this part of the journey started like 38 for you so people have known you for decades a certain way mm -hmm. right and it feels to me like that like you're changing so much so much is let me not change it maybe that's not the word you're shifting let's use that word right now yeah. uh right you're shifting you're transforming whatever it is you yeah. tell me what, what your experience was uh so much so that the that like you're healing generational like issues like like your son's able to walk in the room and you're like boom that's shifted too um mm -hmm. tell me a bit like at, like how like navigating that shift with others around you like that I, I talk a lot about like being around the norm right and i okay. can see you like changing what people had like been used to around you mm -hmm. or perhaps it was just like another thing that like you know carrie just like goes off and like she 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 makes these kind of moves so it's just another shift there i'd be kind of curious about that i can't yeah. very curious about it yeah um you know that is one of the reasons why people don't change quite mm -hmm. honestly is because you know you uh people have known you, you've known yourself but people have known you throughout the course of life up to a certain point and so the fear is that if i change i'm going to lose like people will leave me people will no longer resonate with me people will no longer relate to me um the, what i would say to that one um yes my life has changed a lot um in, in some incredibly profound beautiful ways the things that have shifted away because things absolutely do when you evolve when you change when you start to shift your beliefs and understandings and perspectives things are going to change around you because you no longer see things the way that you used to i would say for me prior to 2013 i had absolutely no clue who i was uh, I was doing things, I was doing things because other people said I should, because other people thought that I needed to, Hey, I think you'll be really good at this. Your dad did this. This is the avenue that you should go. I would probably call four or five girlfriends before making a decision to get their opinion, to see what they would do. Like I had no clue who I was after that time period. And after doing the healing, after walking through the experiences and understanding the way that I had completely invalidated myself my entire life which is also what I did in 2013. Like after figuring all of that out, I was like, you know what? I can't do that anymore. I absolutely cannot sacrifice myself or deny who I am in order to please other people or to make other people happy around me. Is it painful sometimes? Yeah, it doesn't feel super good. But what I can tell you is that if I, and when I have honored the best version of me, 
the version of me that loves me, the version of me that's strong and powerful and confident, then I am honoring that in everybody else around me, which means I'm kind of calling them up as well and causing them to make that decision for themselves. Do I want to stay where I'm at? Or do I want to do something different? Do I want to change? Could I potentially love myself more? Could I honor myself or really understand who I am on a deeper level? Um, so yeah, a lot shifted. Um, I personally don't recognize myself. I mean, I would say from year to year, there's so much that changes. But the one thing that has always remained the same is the compassion and the love. It has just transformed a little bit to not be so outward, but to be an inward that reflects out, if that makes sense. Well, tell me a little bit more about it, because uh, it's the first time I ever heard of an inward that reflects out like there. So yeah. uh, it make I, like I'm getting sensations around it. Uh, that sound like, does it make sense? Yeah, I'm getting sensations, but I would actually <laughs> like, like to get a little clarity. Um, so when you say it's an inward that reflects outward, just how else might you say that? Yeah. So the only way that you have the ability, the only way I have the ability to have compassion out into the world, to truly empathize with other people, to honor them and to understand who they are without bias or judgment, to be a loving human is to do that for myself first. Like I cannot have any more compassion for you than I have for myself. I can have no more grace for you than I have for myself. And so it has to be an inward journey. And it has to be that compassion and that love that goes inward first, because that's what then reflects out from you. And that's what other people witness and see. So then uh, thank you for that. That actually, mm -hmm. that, that that helps so much. Um, I find myself really curious now then to the, the, post 2019 time period, right? Mm -hmm. um, I wanted like, uh, this is also my own natural curiosity of like, okay, so you have a business now around this here. Um, you like, you have a team, you're, you're, you're out in the world um, living in, in this mission in a, in a mm -hmm. really real way. Uh, I'm curious about like how you take that components of like inner wisdom and how you've integrated it into various parts of, of like what you do, right? In, in, into your business. So uh, whether it's, the way like your culture on your team and what you what mm -hmm. you uh, do there um or the various offerings that you have that like you look at and you see a little bit differently from others um there's I, it's almost like uh, i'm playing with the element of if we do we do the inner work right mm -hmm. and then it gets reflected out outward and i'm almost like mm -hmm. how did that reflect in your organization yeah um you know when when we look at organizations there really is a uh, drive and a need for a shift in culture and we're always looking at that from a leadership perspective. When we look at it from a leadership perspective, we've always seen it from like a top-down view. And I know that was even the case when I owned my business. It was always seen as kind of this hierarchical thing. And what people don't understand is that the only way that an organization can truly work, the only way that the culture is going to be able to shift is if the leader shifts. Because everything resonates out from leadership down, leadership kind of broadly throughout the organization. Vulnerability is something that organizations want. They want creativity. They want to have clarity. They're looking for innovation. But it's the things that get in the way that block that. It's the way that we show up without the ability to be vulnerable. And we'll use my own experience as an example. When I came back from Boston, I became very, very ill and nobody knew. I would go to the hospital on a Friday. I would show back up to work on a Monday. Nobody knew anything was going on because my fear, my deep fear as a leader in an organization is that should anybody see any form of weakness, then everything is going to be pulled out from underneath me, right? That's something that people attack. That's something that I have to hold very close to the chest. I have to ensure that I am strong and that I am confident and I am showing up that way every single day in order for other people to do that. People understand energy. They don't understand it in the way where it consciously shows up and they go, oh my gosh, this is exactly what's happening. But we feel it. And we feel what's coming through the inauthenticity from leadership because they don't have the ability, because of the way we've been taught from a hierarchical view, they don't have the ability to truly be able to embrace that own vulnerability, to be able to take a moment and step aside in order to clear the chaos sit in confusion for a hot minute, find some presence and allow the clarity to come forward. If we took the opportunity to do that, then that would completely shift the way that we lead, 
it would bring uh, company cultures together and it would offer an opportunity for that innovation that everybody's looking for. But it starts with the leaders and it starts with each individual looking at every situation from a space of curiosity in order to really be able to understand what's happening beyond what it is that they're truly seeing. I appreciate that. Uh, let me, like, I'm going to ask the question here. Mm -hmm. I, I get, I, I think, I think I'm interested in like an example from you, like, like, in, mm -hmm. in like, in how things are going, going for you now, like, um, you, like, in, I guess it's like, it's like, how, how is your mission being carried out in, inside of your organization now? So like, like as, as a leader of mm -hmm. this year, as, as someone, mm -hmm. help me, help me see that a little bit right now. So for me, what it looks like is it doesn't look like uh, it doesn't look like a traditional setup. It looks mm -hmm. like a flat line. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like we are all part of a team. It is the opportunity that I have to really be able to sit down in a present area to have compassion for other people and be able to ask tough questions. But it also means that they get to do the same thing for me. There is an expectation of that, quite honestly. Like if I show up and I'm not showing up as my best self, or if I'm saying something, or if um, I have uh, overstepped my bounds, then my expectation is that you call me on it and you say something about it. Because if you don't, I can't shift it. If you don't, I don't even understand that it's happening. Yeah. But if we can have those kinds of conversations, and then if we can sit without being triggered or upset or without looking at somebody and going, wow, you are really judging me, or that's really critical of you. And instead look at it and go, wow, I really appreciate you pointing out that behavior to me. I appreciate you pointing out the way that that was received to me. It takes me out of the game, right? And then I get to sit back and go, okay, so I wonder why it came out that way. I wonder why I felt like I needed to say that. I wonder why the energy behind it needed to be that way. Because if I can do that and I can shift me, then that means everybody else receives me differently. But then I also have the opportunity to understand when it's simply not mine. And so some of the organizations that I worked in, right, the leaders will have somebody come up, well, you made me feel this way. When we had this meeting, you made me feel this way. You know what? I can't. I can't make you feel any way. So maybe we should just ask a question around that and go, okay, so based on that, what were you truly thinking in that moment? Moment, And what was the emotion? Because the way that I responded or the thing that I said, that's that's a neutral event. It's how you felt about it. And we've got to dig into that because I can't make you feel any particular way. It takes that sting out. We now no longer have that blame. We don't have that friction. We can get curious about things. And then all of a sudden the organization is just flowing that much better because everybody's taking personal responsibility. Yeah. I got you on that. Thank you. Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it, it's, it's really, it's great being in conversation with you because I think uh, the, the element of actually what I get about you is that it's not like, a, it's not an idea, you know, mm -hmm. it's not a, it's not something you heard on a podcast. It's not something mm -hmm. that like, like, you know, like, you know, like you live it, yeah. you live it. And, you, and, and it's, it's something that, that shines through. And I, I like to think about like my outliers out there who are um, in the place where they have experiences that they're not necessarily sure how to bring together. Mm -hmm. um, they have, they have people where they're like, how, like if I actually showed up with everything that I that I believe or everything that I have, could it work out for me and so on and so forth? So I really appreciate you like taking some time to just make it real for us mm -hmm. and 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 play that one out, you know. So uh, we're about to wrap up this part of the conversation, and I want to I want to do a, a few things as as we do that. Uh, the first thing here is like just from your your side of things, if there's anything that you like you want to make sure that if anyone like is listening, like really and truly hears, what would that be? What, what, what do you want to make sure that like people get a chance to like walk away with at least considering? Um, you know, I get asked that question a lot. If you were standing on the top of a mountain, you had 10 minutes in the whole world wow. at your feet, like, what would you say? And I'm like, wow, that's a big question. But here's what I would say. It's three simple things. It's something I repeat to my children consistently. Mm -hmm. And it's this, it is know your worth, honor your truth and always choose you at the end of the day, because if you do that, then you will understand 
the validity of your experiences. You will be able to honor yourself in every experience that you have. You will have the confidence to be able to say no, to be able to shift, to be able to do something different when it doesn't honor you. And every time you do that, you are honoring the highest aspect of somebody else. You're calling them up and forward as well. And so, and at the end of the day, you have to choose you. I I really love this element of like, if you're if you're choosing you and you're and like like living out this inner wisdom, like mm-hmm. everyone else around you benefits from it. And I, I like yes. there's there's something in there where it's like like and it's the cool juxtaposition where it's like yes, you like you influence others. They still have mm-hmm. to like ha- take ownership of their experience mm-hmm. of you, but like there that influence is there. And um, I I think about the number of different challenges that I face or challenges that I'm afraid of that. I recognize if I couldn't fail, I wouldn't actually be afraid. No, it's not if I couldn't fail. I don't mind failing. Uh, I, like I'll, I'll go mess with like things on my website all the time, and like I'm like, oh, that didn't, that doesn't look good. And I'll change it again, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like if, if I didn't if I didn't think I would be called out. If I didn't think it would like if I didn't think the external uh, like my external belief of what would happen mm. if I failed uh, wouldn't come into play. Um, I just think you've just, just given us a lot to to navigate with and uh, and to make that real for us so thank you very much here um carrie let me ask you this question uh if, mm-hmm. like you brought a lot to the table if uh, and i know you have so much more if someone wanted to continue down your world if someone's like hey i want to like uh just immerse myself or move forward with, with something that 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 you offer what's the best way for them to do that um two ways i would say one uh, you can always connect with me on instagram that's at carrie kenzie and the second way i would say is um join our community or our membership it's ishift.life uh we've got a thriving community one that we're continuing to build really where we're challenging people in perspective shifting um kind of disrupting the status quo on a lot of things and opening people awakening them to their truest potential Awesome. And you know, outliers are all about like shifting that, that status quo and challenge. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Um, last question for you here. <laughs> mm-hmm. And and this here is, um, it's not a mountain, <laughs> on a mountain top thing here, uh, but I call it the time capsule question. And my, my, the thing that I'm curious about is um, right now you're living with your inner wisdom right now. You've, mm-hmm. like, you have all your experiences up until this date and this moment. Um, given what you know right now, What's the message that you would leave for yourself to listen to maybe 20 years from now when, when like when there's a message that like you need to hear, you know, mm-hmm. um, that you may have even forgotten about something that is very clear to you or something that's really like it's important around it all. What's the mm-hmm. message that you would leave for yourself right now to, if, you, if you needed to come back in, in years to just be reminded of something that you know to be true? Voices need to be heard. That would be it. Voices mm-hmm. need to be heard. Not only my voice, but voices. And there's power in story. And the more that we can share the story, the more that we can heal through the story, the more empowered other people are going to be in just finding relatability in it. And so I just go back to the whole voices need to be heard. And we'll conclude with that. I I thoroughly appreciate you. Thank you so much, Carrie. Like yeah. uh, I Thank you for being for being who you are, for bringing who you are, uh, and for continuing to find ways to amplify who others are as well. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be in conversation with you. Oh, thanks. It was an amazing conversation.